Hello, I'm Jennifer Wilcox from the National Cryptologic Museum at the National Security Agency. Welcome to Revolutionary Secrets, Cryptology in the American Revolution. In this episode, we'll be looking at the different cipher systems used during the war and the role that they played. When people think of secret messages, they often think of encrypted letters like this one. This is a letter written by Dr. Benjamin Church in July 1775. Dr. Church was elected as a delegate to the Massachusetts Provisional Congress and a liaison to the Continental Congress. He was even named Chief Physician of the Continental Army, effectively the Surgeon General of the United States. And all the while, he spied for the British military governor of Massachusetts, General Thomas Gage. It was this encrypted letter that brought Dr. Church's downfall. A Rhode Island baker, Godfrey Wenwood, was approached by his ex-wife in August 1775. She asked Wenwood to help her get in touch with some British officers so she could give them a letter. Suspicious, Wenwood convinced her to leave the letter with him and he would pass it on. Instead, he gave the letter to a friend who opened it to discover cryptic writing of symbols, numbers, letters, and Greek characters. Unable to understand it, he gave it back to Wenwood. In September, Wenwood presented the enciphered letter to George Washington. The woman was brought before Washington, and under interrogation, she admitted the letter came from Dr. Church. Washington was probably surprised by this news. He called the doctor to explain the, this incriminating evidence. Church admitted he'd written the letter, but claimed that it was to his brother and nothing important. However, he could not explain why it was addressed to a British military officer, and he refused to decrypt the letter and prove his innocence. Washington gave the letter to Dr. Samuel West, a former classmate of Church's. He also gave it to Elbridge Gerry and Colonel Alicia Porter, who worked on it as a team. They all came up with the same solution. The cipher used a simple monoalphabetic substitution. Each letter of the alphabet was replaced by a different letter, number, or character. The cipher revealed that Church was providing General Gage with information on America's ammunition supplies, rations, recruiting, a proposed attack on Canada, artillery in Kingsbridge, New York, the troop strength in Philadelphia, and the general mood of the Continental Congress. The encrypted letter sealed his fate. After being jailed and a prisoner exchange refused, Church was finally exiled to the West Indies in 1780. Unfortunately for him, the ship sank and Church was never heard from again. Encryption such as Dr. Church's letter was nothing new at the time of the American Revolution. In fact, Julius Caesar is known to have used a simple substitution cipher. By the 18th century, the science of cryptography and its counterpart cryptanalysis had become common practice in European governments. Most had offices called black chambers, where diplomatic communications were intercepted, opened, copied, decrypted, resealed, and forwarded on. However, not everyone, including Dr. Church, was as adept at the art of cryptology as those working in the black chamber. Dr. Church's message was solved by West and Jerry and Porter because it used a simple monoalphabetic substitution. When A is always replaced by 9 and theta always replaces R and so on, the cipher retains the same frequency and rules as the original language. Church's long message, just over two pages, provided enough information for the teams to make assumptions. If the most commonly used cipher is the lowercase p, then it probably equated to the most commonly used letter in the English language, e. Similar guesses and assumptions could be made, making the long monoalphabetic message fairly easy to solve, as Dr. Church learned. Charles Dumas developed a very popular cipher employed by American representatives that was easy to use, but harder for the enemy to break. Dumas, a German-born scholar, lived in the Netherlands. While Benjamin Franklin served as an American representative in London, Dumas struck up a, fame, a friendship and correspondence with him. At the time of the American Revolution, and at Franklin's suggestion, the United States made Dumas an agent. They paid him 100 pounds and gave him secret assignments. Well aware of the European Black Chamber's penchant for opening other countries' diplomatic mail, Dumas created his cipher and instructed American diplomats on its use. It was perhaps the easiest and most reliable cipher system used by the Americans at that time. Dumas's cipher used a paragraph of French prose. Each letter and punctuation mark was numbered in a one-up order. This meant that individual letters could have more than one number assigned to it. For example, here, V can either be 1 or 8. This is known as a homophonic cipher. Then Dumas created a two-part list. One part showed every possible number for each letter. The second part listed the numbers and the letter associated with it. The writer of the secret message could select any number within the options for a single letter. Since the letter E wouldn't always be the number 5, but could be any of 127 different numbers, 
the crypt analyst standard methods for looking for letter frequency did little good. Unfortunately, this cipher wasn't used in its most secure fashion. People, including Franklin and Dumas, tended to use the first few numbers listed for any of the letters rather than a random selection of the choices. Nonetheless, it was quite simple to use and was popular among American representatives who used it throughout the war. This letter, written using Dumas's cipher, explained how to use different ciphers created by James Lovell, but we'll talk about that in the second part of this episode. Please join me for parts two and three of the segment on ciphers in Revolutionary Secrets as the cryptographic systems become more complicated and the cryptanalysis plays a larger role in the American Revolution. Now, try this revolutionary activity. Create your own monoalphabetic cipher by assigning each letter a different number, letter, or symbol. Write a long sentence or two using your cipher. Give your message to a friend and see if they can break your cipher. Have fun! <laughs>